each one of us are into our workplaces, wherever we find ourselves. Father, then, oh Lord, it's a field that, Lord, we can gather the harvest in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for strength, physical strength, sonical strength, spiritual strength, strength in all areas and aspects of our lives to continue to live, to live for you, to live for you, and to live through you, oh God. We thank you. We bless you. We adore you, oh captain of our salvation, oh captain of the ship. We bless you. We are sailing ashore. We are sailing. We are going on to the other side. We are crossing over. We are with you. You are with us. We are in you. You are in us. We cannot be defeated. We cannot be defeated. We cannot be deflated. In the name of Jesus, we are strengthened in our inner man. In the name of Jesus, we are empowered in our inner man. In the name of Jesus, oh, we are being led by your spirit, for them that are born of your spirit, they are your children, they are your sons. Father, we are born of your spirit, and we are led by your spirit. We are influenced by your spirit. We are filled with your spirit. We move in you. We live in you. The name of the Lord is our rock. The name of the Lord is our hope. We hook on to you. We hold on to you in the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus Christ. The name of our Redeemer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want us to pray for this nation. Let us declare the life of God to be revived once again in the hearts of people. Let's pray for our government. Let's pray for all other nations that we affect positively you know sometimes nations are looking to another nation to see how things are going with them and then they seem to copy or you know come in affiliation let us pray that this nation will become a prototype that will be to the will of God as other nations are looking onto Great Britain as other nations are watching observing what we are doing and what we are not doing God will cause us to be example, good, effective example unto the world, unto other nations. Let us pray for this nation. Father, we thank you. We bless you. You say, wherever the soles of our feet shall tread, there have you given unto us for our inheritance. This nation is our inheritance, Lord. This nation is our possession, Lord. We give it back unto you. And we declare that, Father God, you will fine-tune this nation. You will find prune this nation, that this nation shall be the apple of your eye. This nation shall be, oh God, in the center, oh God, of our activities, center of God's own attraction, center of all that God wants to do in the world. In the name of Jesus, we declare the righteousness of God being established. We declare the holiness of God being established. We declare the mind of God being established. We declare the purpose of God, the plans of God being established in this nation. We declare and we thank you that our government, Lord, we declare and we thank you that everyone in authority, every family, every nation that is represented in this UK, Father God will receive a portion, a portion of the Lord, a portion that will keep us to be influential people, influential nation in Jesus' name, a positive influence, a positive influence that we will look or God unto you and we receive from you to give out to disperse with in Jesus name we bless your holy name we thank you for the health of the people we thank you O God for revival of the hearts of the people we thank you O God for your own visitation we magnify you we exalt you any nation whose king is the Lord they dwell in peace they dwell in peace we declare that you are the prince of this nation you are the governor of this nation you are 
are the Lord of this nation so we can live in peace. We can live in peace. We can live in peace to serve you. Hey, Kashon Derebo Seketaya. In the Rebo Shotorobo, Spirit of the Lord, you know where this nation is going. Continue to navigate us. Continue to navigate us onto the purpose of God, onto the will of God, onto the mindset of God. In the name that is above every name, we cry unto you. We cry unto you. Bring, O oh God, your kingdom. Establish your throne, O oh Lord. Let your will be done, O oh Lord. Ilelebo Sheke Rabasaya. Oh, touch our leaders, touch our government, touch all departments of this nation. Touch every family, every individual with your power, with your power, resurrect us with your power, revive us with your power, heal us with your power, save us with your power. Oh, cause us to be refreshed, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, thank you. Finally, I want you to pray for yourself. It is not by chance that you are here. It is not by chance that you have locked on. It is not by chance that you are alive, even for that matter. There is a reason, there is a cause. I want you to pray that, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Just present yourself. Present yourself before the Lord. Thank you, Father. Here I am. Here I am. All that I have. All that I am. I lay it under your feet. All that I am. All that I think. All that I desire. I present before you. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Word of God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, mighty God. Have your way, have your way. Have your way in my spirit. Have your way in my soul. Have your way in my body, my thinking. Have your way in all that I am. Oh, speak unto me, Lord. Yea, touch my life, oh Lord. For your word is quick, your word is powerful. Your word, oh God, is life. Your word, oh Lord, is my comfort. Your word is my light. Your word is my light. Your word is my direction. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Spirit Divine. Oh, thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, eternal God. We worship you, most holy God. We acknowledge your presence in us and with us, wherever we see ourselves, wherever we find ourselves, wherever we are. We're calling on you, we're depending on you, and relying on you. Continue to have your way. Thank you, Jesus. Let's join in as we worship God through music.
Somebody who feels alone, say, say, because you're, hey, because you're with me. Somebody say, because you're with me. Say, I will not fear. And though I've been left alone, though I had to walk alone, say, don't none go with me.
Can I get some dancers in this place? Everybody, come on.
Jehovah turns my life around. He just turns my life. Everything is looking good. It's working for my good. Amen. That is how he turns your life around. That sometimes you look at it and say, hmm, this one will not work out. But he says, all things work together for my good. Amen. That's what he has said. You see, when scripture says in the book of Psalms and say that God actually perfects what sort of a concerns you. You look at it and say, hey, but I don't see things that are perfect in my life. I don't see it. In God's diary, it is his purpose that he reaches where you are and make you what he wants you to attain. And that is, that is why he turns your life around to such an extent that you become someone that can reach out unto others also. Amen? So Jehovah turns my life around. Let us pray. We give you praise and we give you thanks, our God, for our lives together as a people, our lives together as a community, our lives together in here and elsewhere. We thank you that whatsoever concerns us you change things and you move things and you work things out so that your purpose in us will be accomplished. Thank you. We may not see it, but you are working your life, your way around us. Thank you for today and we bless you for joining us together as a people here. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to work in us. We thank you for brethren that are with us online, remotely, virtually, wherever, and whatever words we will use. We are asking that you knit our hearts together and give us a word to move on in our lives. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be sit down. You may be seated in his wonderful presence. You may sit. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. You are welcome. Among the congregation, you are welcome. Those that are online, you are welcome. Those that are watching and being part of outside this, you are welcome. You are so welcome. God bless you for being with us. For the first time or... You are someone regularly coming and worshiping with us. The Lord bless you. Amen. As we entered into the year 2020, the Lord, 2022, the Lord gave us that he wants us to certainly look at impacting on other people's lives because things are changing and we have been placed in a privileged place where we can impact on other people's lives. And so, when we talked about this on the first Sunday, which is the second, he actually mentioned so many things. But what he gave to us, the slogans that we need to look at, is that we can, we should, and we must. Amen? We can, we should, and we must. We can because God has placed us in a place of privilege. We can because he has revealed his love unto us and made us be in a place where we can take control and take influence and impact on the life of other people. We can because we are what God says we are. Amen? We should because we are the one that God wants to use. And if we keep quiet in times like this, we are not fulfilling what God wants us to fulfill. We should. We should. It is our calling. It is what God wants to give to us and or has given to us. We must because it is our mandate. 
in here, if we fail our mandate, when I was someone that, I'm someone that loved hymns and in the Methodist church, there's a song that goes like this, a charge to keep I have. A charge to keep I have. A God to glorify and a never dying soul to save. And in the final stanza, in the last stanza, he actually said this. The hymn writer said, I know if I do not fulfill my calling, I will forever die. I will not be able to impact on others if I choose not to. So we must. Today we want to continue from there and look at having impact on the lives of others. And how we can set up our mind, we can make our mind set to move on in this. You know, the Bible says that we, as we are now, should have a different mindset, a thought, a different thought, changing our minds so that God can use us as we are. I want us to turn our Bibles to the book of Jeremiah and chapter number one. We can. Jeremiah chapter number one. I'm reading from verse number four downwards. See yourself in this reading. You just see yourself. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. And I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Be not afraid. Say not that I am a child. Say not that I know nothing. Say not that I do, I'm not equipped enough. For you shall go to all that I shall send you. And whatsoever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you and will deliver you. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, 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 I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy, and to throw down, and to build, and to plant. I don't know whether you saw yourself in that. There are many people, many believers, who do not acknowledge that they are endowed for making an impact in another person's life. They do not acknowledge that. They do not see it probably because of how they see themselves in another mirror. The mirror of their own mind. The mirror of their own thoughts. The mirror of what they are living in. This could be two reasons. One, either because they do not have the knowledge of who they are. Or number two, they are just bluntly ignoring what they see in them to be able to give, to have impact on another person. It's that you don't, you don't know. Because if you don't know, you don't know. But sometimes we know it, but we choose to neglect whatsoever the Lord has put in us. 
we, we, we water it down to such an extent that we are not able to have that influence. I don't know which category you might fit in. And so as I speak, I'm speaking as a general place, in a general place, just for you to pick where you are so that you can move on from one point to another to be able to impact on another person's life, to influence another person's life. It could be that I am living in a, some loose, ungodly life. And so, I see myself, I need to hide. Otherwise, this same person I'm going to speak to, this same person I want to support, this same person I want to tell them about God, is not singing any godly life in me. And so, I begin to hide myself. Or you just don't want others to know what you know. You don't want others to experience what you experience, what the Lord has worked through you. Let us change the way we think. In Jeremiah chapter number one, we see that God began to speak to Jeremiah when he was calling him into, he was, let me use the word, ordaining him into his ministry of a prophet. And God said, in verse number four, as the word of the Lord came unto him, he said, before I formed you, number one, you need to acknowledge that it is not just your existence, but that God formed you. If you don't acknowledge that, you would think that you are just in this world. I was formed. Do you want to agree with that? That I'm not just here by chance. I was formed. I was made for a time like this. Before I formed thee, who formed me? The hand of the Almighty has formed me, has made me. And the word of the Almighty has sustained me. That's the time in this place I mentioned that you were not the only one. You were not the only one that actually was transmitted into your mother's womb or your, your, your mother's life. But you actually swam enough to be able to fertilize the mom's egg. And you are here and so you are a conqueror. You are victorious. Others died on the way. And you are here. And so God formed you. It was by his purpose. He chose to do that. I formed you. Don't think that you are just here and spend your life from when you were born until when you die. Don't think that way. Between birth and death, there is work to do. There is work to do. So he said, I formed you. I formed you. And even the forming is that, not just that, I just put you there in your mother's belly, in your mother's womb. He said, I knew you. Hey, I knew you. Mama, when you were pregnant with your daughter or with your son, did you know them? You didn't know. Probably if you even went to those people with knowledge to say, can you scan and see whether this is a daughter or a, 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 a son? That will be all that you will know when that is revealed unto you. You would not know the child you are carrying. But God said, I formed you, number one. And number two, I did what? I knew you. I knew you. I knew you. I formed you. I knew you. Are you keeping that? That you are not just here. God knows you. He knew your weaknesses. He knew what your genetic makeup would be. He knew that you would not be someone that probably would be someone that would be bubbly and, and laughing everywhere and making friends everywhere you go and smiling everywhere. He probably knew that you would be a reserved person. God knew that you'd be someone that probably softly touched another person's life. God knew 
that you might be someone that will be a charismatic, outgoing person, throwing your hands up and down just as I'm doing. God knew that you probably would stand here and then talk softly. He knew you. He knew your characteristic. But say to yourself, I am here and God knew me. He actually formed me. He knew me. He knew me. And probably that was the thing that Jeremiah was saying. That I'm a child. I am this. I am that. But he said, I knew you. And apart from knowing you, he said, I actually sanctified you. I cleansed you. I set you apart. Formed, new, sanctified. I sanctified you. I cleansed you. I took you out to wash you and make you clean. And so what God has sanctified, let no man say that it is profane or dirty unless you make yourself that way. That is why I said from the beginning that unless you don't know, but sometimes you know and you don't put yourself in a place like that. See yourself differently. For you to be able to impact on the life of another person, you have to see yourself that you are able to. That is why Paul said, those things that I have committed unto you, you commit also unto faithful men who are able. Know that you are in a position. If you don't know, then you will not be able to make progress. I know I'm a teacher of the word. I might not be an effective leader here and there. I might not be a crowd puller. But when I meet someone one-to-one, I'm able to impart their lives. Probably I know that. And someone will see me and say, no, no, no. You are a wonderful leader. You are a wonderful leader. No. I might not see myself that way. I remember some time ago, in the place where I do a secular job, I went to my manager and said, look, I can't even manage my own life. How do I manage another person's life and say you are the manager? You see that? If I can't manage my own life, he said, no, no, Kwame, there's so much in you. You can be. I did not see myself that way, but someone saw me. Let's go back into that. I formed you. I knew you. I sanctified you. You are holy. Tell yourself, I am sanctified. I am sanctified. It doesn't matter what you see now. The glory of the Lord, when you are sanctified, when you are cleansed, when you are set apart, the glory of the Lord overshadows you. And so wherever you go, you are sanctified. What God has sanctified, let no man say it is unclean. Simple. You are sanctified. Sanctified by the blood of the Lamb sanctified. That sacrificial blood that was poured on Calvary's cross made you clean and whole. The word that God spoke unto you because you know, he said, because of what I have told you, you are already clean. You are already clean. Then move on, Jeremiah said, I did not only sanctify you, I set you in the place. I ordained you. The word ordination is set in order, set in a place. This is where I want you to be. And so when God sanctified you, he put you in that place, in the day of your calling. Some people are called into prayer impartation. You pray to impact on the life of another person. That you may not be able to to, to do other things that other people will do. Because we are all called differently. And so if I judge someone's calling, thinking that everybody should be like me, I make a mistake. We are called differently. We are called, we are ordained, we are set in a place. We are set in a place differently. What another person does, 
I may not be able to do that. And so, if that person is not doing what I am doing, I should not say they are not doing their ordained work. That is what is going on now. If you are not like me, it means that you are a failure. I don't agree with you. I don't do this with you. No, you are different. You are ordained by God. You were formed. You were known. You were sanctified. You were ordained. Ha! Huh. I don't know how you think you see yourself. I'm talking about having impact. And the first thing is to know yourself that this is what I can do. I I'm ordained. Ordained by God. Ordained by the one who knew me and sanctified me. He, when he ordained him, if you, if you read on, he said, and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. That is the place. Jeremiah was not called to be an, an ordained, to be a teacher to be an apostle like Paul. Jeremiah was not called to be a, a, a leader like Moses and say, lead the people and get them out of Egypt. No, he was not. He was not ordained and set in place to be like David, who was a king. No, he was called in here a prophet. He was ordained a prophet. Not everybody is a prophet. In the church, not everybody is a prophet. In ministries, not everybody is a prophet. The certain is that today, you see prophets pastoring churches. Pastors are different from prophets. As much as a pastor can prophesy, it might not be that he is a prophet. But Lord, speak through him anyway. I'm just letting us know that we all have different callings. So to have impact, know that you are ordained to do this. You know that some of us are ordained to actually give out our money. You are fully loaded with money that you would give out. Sometimes too, you may not have the money, the cash, to give out, but you have a word to speak to someone to change the course of their life. And if someone has the money to give, and they give a million pounds, and you have a word to say, and you say that a word, don't think that the one that has given the million pounds had done so much work than you have. That is their ordained place. That is the ordained place. But because one might be a substance that you can see and handle, they probably value the million pounds you gave to them. But I have seen people that have won 20 million pound lottery. I've heard of them. I've not, I don't know them. 20 million pound lottery and their life today is worse than they were before. They have not managed it. But if you probably have spoken a word to them, you probably have changed the direction of their life completely. I'm saying that do not, do not think you are not worth in the house of God. You have an ordained place the day of your calling. To have impact, you need to accept that. Some of us stand here and we just sing one song of worship and that's it. Others come in here they will set up the chairs, arrange that. That might be their ordained place. That might be their, their, their gift that God, their gifting that God has given unto them. Let me move on. And he said, I have called you a prophet for the, unto the nations. Then I said, oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. Sometimes you don't see yourself called as ordained in that place because you are looking at some physical, material, structural manifestation in you before you think you are that. 
that no, know that if you accept that, I know you have ordained me into this place. He that ordained you, oh God, he that ordained you and set you in that place will certainly give you utterance. Because he said, do not say that I am a child. Do not say that. You said I'm a child, I cannot speak. Do not say that. Say not, that's verse 7, that I am a child. For you shall go to all that I shall send you. God is saying you are an ambassador. I'm sending you as my representation. And I'm going to put the words in your mouth. You will speak it. I have nothing to say. I'm a child. I'm, I'm, I'm not wise enough. I cannot speak like those that have words that they rhyme. You know that? That when your test becomes a testimony and your whatever becomes an, uh, so many, they, they have words they say and they rhyme it. I am not that. I go straight to the point and I say it. That doesn't make mine inferior or their superior. That is what God has given to them. Let them go on with it. Let them go on. We do not say I am a child. Am I speaking to someone here? Do not say that I do not have what it takes. Which I always say that sometimes to myself. Not always, sometimes to myself. I don't think I have what it takes. And the sad thing is that because we compare. Listen to me, my calling is not the same as another person's calling. If I compare myself with another person's calling, that's where failure comes. That's where failure comes. And I said, oh, I, 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 I'm a child. I don't know how to speak. Probably Jeremiah was comparing himself with other prophets that have come before him and have spoken mightily and magnificently and, and, and significant words that have affected the nations. So he said, no, I'm not like them. And God is saying, you can do it. Tell yourself, I can do it. That is why I said, you can. You can. You can have impact. I can. I can have impact. Because God says so. Amen? Not because I just want to, but because God says so. He says that I'm going to speak to the nations. I might not see it now, but I'm going to speak to the nations. He said that I'm going to impact on this life. You might not see it, but because God says it is so. And the Lord said, let there be light, and it was so. And the Lord said, let there be trees on the earth that bear tree, tree, uh, fruit bearing trees that are seed in itself. And it was so. And the Lord said, let, let, let the seas be filled with, 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 with fishes that swim. And, and it was so. If God said it, it is so. If God has said it, then it is so. If we, not negl if we neglect not to have that impact on other people's life. God will certainly use us. And he said, I am the one that will deliver you. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. I'm praying right now that God will touch our minds. That our minds will change. Touch our minds by his spirit. Touch the areas, the core, where the confidence is not coming from. That the touching of the core would make us bold enough. I'm sold on being bold. God has given me that boldness. Because we have this hope, we speak with boldness. I pray that God will endow you with what sort of a you need to impact. I'm praying that, that God will make you one that can even touch one life. Positively. Positively. One is too many. One is too many. The reason is that that one may bring millions into the kingdom. And if you do not touch that one, that one wouldn't have 
gotten into that. So that might be your calling. Your calling. He said, when he had put forth his hand and touched him, he said, see, what God wants you to do is then acknowledge it. Because I started by saying some of us do not acknowledge that. But now he said, see, behold, acknowledge it. Acknowledge it because by my touching your mouth, I have put my words in your mouth this day. And I have set you over the nations, over the kingdoms to root out and to plant. Hallelujah. Root out, pull down, destroy, throw down, to build and to plant. Those things that are the altars of the enemy that has turned, go and pull them down. Hallelujah. Those things that the enemy has done in their life, go and turn it all over again. And you remember in the Gospel of Matthew when Jesus was talking about this man, this young boy who had the, the, the spirit of dumbness and uh, epileptic and demon in their lives and God had prepared his uh, disciples to actually have spoken a word and to change and to cast out that demon and they were thinking that they cannot do it and whatever. Jesus came around and then said, hey, you people of, you faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be with you? Just speak it. Just speak it. Just speak it. Just speak it. Are you following what I'm, what I'm talking about today? I believe you are. I believe you are. Let us go into the book of Esther. We go into the book of Esther. Esther is after the book of Nehemiah, I guess. In the book of Esther, chapter number four. Esther, chapter number four. If I tell you the, 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 the story of Esther, it's just give you a summary of that book, of that story of Esther. Esther was a Jewish young lady. And as they had carried them into captivity she ended up in a Persian court king's court and it happened that she became part of the young ladies that King Xerxes wanted to find a bride from and the Bible says Esther had favor with the maidens that were in there and they groomed Esther prepared her for a beauty context that the king would choose a wife from, a queen from. And as it happened, and I'll use the word happened, because at that time, if you just read that book, you would think that it only happened that Esther ended up in the king's court to become the king's queen. But in chapter 4 and verse number 14, of in, in, in chapter 4, you find that there, were, there was a man who planned to destroy the Jews in Persia, in the king's kingdom. And Esther, having been orphaned, her uncle Mordecai took care of her and she was under her guardianship. And when Esther had ended up in the king's court and there was a plot to destroy the Jews in there, Mordecai has heard it and Mordecai sent a word over to Esther and said, Esther, I want to let you know that there's a reason why you have had this kingdom. There's a reason why you've ended up in the king's court. You might not know it. You might think that 
you were just there because you won a beauty contest and the, and the king picked you up. No, there is a reason. I'm letting you know that there, there's a reason why you are here today. You just didn't end up saying that, oh, they said there's a face-to-face -face service, so I will come. No, there is a reason. The steps of the righteous are ordered by God. Your steps were ordered. Wherever you go, know that it is an order. God has ordered your steps. And so Mordecai was telling Esther that, hey, Esther, I want to let you know, do not keep quiet as a queen. You have an influence. You can impact the king. You can actually influence the king's decision. And Mordecai sent this word, verse number 14. And when Mordecai sent that word, commanded to answer, verse 13 said, Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. So what he's saying, what Mordecai was saying is that you might be in a privileged place. But I want to let you know that when it comes to destroying the Jews, someone in here knows that you are a Jew. And you'll be destroyed. You get that? There could be some spies. There could be some insiders that know that Esther, you are a Jew. You are actually a Jew. You are not a Persian lady. And if they are destroying the Jews, they will destroy you too. Know that you will not. For if you altogether hold your peace at this time, if you all together do not say something at this time, if you all together not impact the life of another person at this time, if you all together say, I am just insignificant, I cannot do anything. And that is what Esther was thinking while she was there. I'm only a woman. What impact can I make in her life? of a whole nation. What impact can I make? I'm only a woman. I'm only a little girl. I'm only a young maiden. What impact can I make? Ha, ha, ha. Mordecai said, no, that is not the truth. That is not the truth. He said, if you keep quiet in this time, know that if there is a destruction, you will also be destroyed. Then shall there be an enlargement. There will be salvation. There will be deliverance for the Jews. It will arise for the Jews. But you, you see that? You and your father's house shall perish. You and your father's house shall perish. It shall be destroyed. And then he asked and said, I want to let you know who knows. Who knows whether you are come to the kingdom for a time such as this? Who knows you are living in this time such as this? You can have impact. You can have impact. Who knows? No one knows. Probably you don't know yourself. Who knows that you have come at a time such as this. And when that word got to Esther, Esther came back to her senses. Sometimes it's just a word. It's just one word. It's just a word of admonition, a word of counsel, a word of rebuke. It could be just that. Someone living in a place or in a, in, in a situation where it's actually not God's line for them. All they might probably need to impact their life is just a word. It's just a word. Sometimes too, you have to adapt them with you, mentor them, push them, pull them with you, and then push them to go. 
But he said, who knows? You have a time, you have attained the kingdom in a time such as this. Who knows? God's ordination upon your life. God's knowing, God's calling, God's sanctifying, God putting in that place and, and giving you a word to speak is for a time such as this. Let me let you know that you are living in a better time than someone that was living yesterday. Because it's your opportunity it's your season. Amen? It's your season. It's your time. It's your season. It's your time. And then he said, then Esther sent to return to Mordecai and said, you Mordecai, please go gather people. Go gather all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast for me. Ha, ha, ha. Esther said, I can do it. I acknowledge it now. I'm willing to do it. I should do it. And I must do it. You see that? I can. Now Esther acknowledges that I can. Tell yourself I can. I can. I can. And then he added, she added, I should do it. Because now I'm in a position where I should do it. I'm not a street girl now. I'm not one that is a slave singing somewhere. Now I am in the king's court. Opportunity has been provided for me, so I should. I should take that opportunity. And I must do it. So you help me. Go gather the Jews in Shusham and then let them fast for me. And when they fast for me, three days, I and my, my maidens here, she had a servant. She had servants. She had maidens. He said, me and the maidens here would also fast. We will pray. And I will go to the king. If I perish, I perish. Hallelujah. That is the must. I must do it. If I perish, I perish. I'm going. It is my calling. It is my ordination. It, is, it has been given to me to do it. And I'm going. So fast and support me. And I go. I will not eat and I and my maidens would also fast likewise. And so I will go in unto the king. Which is not according to the law. If I perish, I perish. He said it's not according to the law until the king calls you to come to the king's presence, you cannot go and talk to the king. Even though you are the king's maid, even though you are the king's wife, even though you are the queen, you cannot just get up and go to the king. But uh, Esther said, I will do that. I should do that and I must do that. If I perish, I perish. Why don't you put your life in Esther's position and say, I will go and impact on that life what the Lord has put on my heart. I will go. Whether they accept it or they don't accept it, I have been. I can do it. I should do it. And I must do it. I must do it. Church, we can. There are so many people in scripture I can bring to our attention. You remember in the book of Isaiah in chapter number 6 when God was talking about Israel and said Israel Israel is just like a donkey that even does not know the, 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 the trough from which he eats. But there is someone that I want to send. In chapter 6, he said, it starts with, in the year when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. This is Isaiah saying. And he said, the Lord was in his wonderful temple, clothed. All his glory had filled the temple. And there were angels, cherubims, and seraphim speaking unto him, holy, 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 holy. And his glory had filled the temple. Then on and on in verse number 8, we find that God needed someone to do something for him. Hey, this whole God needs someone, needs man to do something for him. The, when, he, when, when Isaiah heard, whom shall I send and who will go for me? Probably Isaiah sat down and said, hey, so God, you also have a need. 
There is a need in heaven. There is a need. If man does not do it, God cannot do it. He needs man to do it. He needs you to do it. You can say, God, here I am, but send him. I am here, but send him. No, God wants to send you to impact on the, another person's life. God wants to send you. you. It might not be that you are going to the person to speak. You might be even impacting their life in your bedchamber. You remember Elisha? When Elisha was impacting the king's life in his bedchamber, that when the Syrian king thinks of where he's, he's going to come to defeat and to fight with Israel, Elisha would just send word to the king and said, don't go this way, don't go that way, send an ambush this way for this is where Syria is coming. He was in his bedchamber. Then the Syrian king said, who amongst you, when he talked to his elders, who among you is against me? That any time we think of something and whatever, they go and then they tell the king of Israel. Then one said, it's, it's none of us, no one. There is a man. There is a man in Israel. Anything you say in your bedchamber, he sees it. Hey! He sees it and impact on the king of Israel. He's in Dothan. Go and pick him up. But they that are with Elisha was more than they that were coming to him. Hallelujah. And so it might not be that God is saying, go to that person and talk to them. Ask God properly. We will talk about that in course of time. But if God might just want you to stay in your bedchamber and then just speak some words, just make some declarations. And then the turning coming, turning around for my good. You find that, that the, 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 the power prayer, the declarations and whatever you are doing is changing people's lives in your bedchamber. In your bedchamber. So Isaiah sat down and said, hey, so God also has a need. I didn't know God has a need. When he wants to send someone, he said, whom shall I send? God could, have, God could have sent an angel, couldn't he? But he wanted man. He has given the earth to the sons of men, to the children of men. And so you are in a better position to affect another person's life than an angel can in this situation, in this condition, in this circumstance. Yes. Then, when, Eli, when, when Isaiah heard that, he said, then I said, here, Mia, here, I send, here, I am, send me, send me. And he said, go. The very moment you are willing, the very moment you are willing, God would ordain you into that position. He said, go. Go tell these people. Speak unto them what I have given unto you. And then he said, oh, I am unclean. My lips are unclean. You remember the same thing Jeremiah was saying. I can't speak. I can't whatever. And the Bible says, one of the angels went onto the altar and took a coal of fire and then touched his lips and said, this has touched your lips. You are clean. Your lips are clean. You are entirely separated, sanctified. We are different, church. We can affect this nation. We can do what? We can affect this nation as long as we are willing. We can change glorious inheritance missions image as long as we as as long as we want to, as long as we choose to, as long as we don't choose to sit on uh, uh, the fence, as long as we don't keep our tithes and offerings in our homes and in our bank accounts and spread and spend it on shoes and and, 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 and whatever things that you spend on. You tell me those things that you spend on. Which one? Hair, hairdo, yeah. Hairdo, hairstyles. Ascension nails. Uh, those things. Give God his money back to him. It belongs to him. 
He has asked you to actually give. Please, if we want to see a change in this world, what, what moves on is that you give yourself wholly to the Lord and all grace will abound towards you. All grace that you have all sufficiency. Just as Isaiah did. He said, here I am. Send me. Send this money. Send this offering. Send this person that I'm giving my whole self to you. Because God's treasure is in you. God giving us grace. Another time we meet, we will continue from here. But if you forget anything, all that you have heard today, if you forget anything completely and tidy, don't forget that God has called you at a time such as this. If I neglect it, if I don't do it, then deliverance will come, but I will not benefit, enjoy the fruit of it. I will not enjoy the fruit of it. We will continue from here next time and move on as the Lord gives us grace. Let us pray. I don't know what you have heard and picked up, but I would want you to pray. You tell God something. You can. You can tell him something. I don't know your resolution, the things you want to resolve with God. If you are resolving with God, that God, I think the reason why I'm not having impact is the way I'm living now. Can you change me, God? Can you forgive my sin, Lord? And cleanse me and sanctify me. Or if it is that I didn't know, hey, I didn't know that God's power is upon my life this way. I didn't know that God has such an influence on my life this way. And so, things are different. So God, bring to my attention what things I need to do. You pick me up as you picked Jeremiah. Pick me up as you picked Esther. Pick me up as you picked Isaiah and say I'm arrested. I'm apprehended until I achieve that which I have been apprehended for. Just give me that grace. His grace is all you need. Knowledge is all you need. And it is the Holy Ghost that will give you an enlightenment in your spirit. You are not a failure. No, you are not. There was a time I was thinking that way. That I am a failure. Because I was relating also to other people. Thinking that I should attain what they have also they have attained. I should also attain it. And I realize that I'm missing it. Don't. You are an individual. You are original. Don't die a photocopy. You are original. And so tell God that God. Now show me where I should go. Just set me on my path to go. As you have forgiven me. As you have cleansed me, as you have put this coal of fire on my lips and giving me a word to speak and giving me what to do, just show me clearly my ministry that I can fulfill it. Let your grace do that. In my life. You are a vessel of honor. You are one that God has filled. You are an ambassador for Christ. You are one that cannot fail because he that is in you cannot fail. As long as you acknowledge that when you speak, heaven backs you. 
As long as you can acknowledge that when even if it's one word of prayer or one word of declaration or one word of command you give to the enemy, heaven backs you. You would have impact. We're taking this this whole year and we need to reach out there unto many people's lives. God give you that grace, my Father. In the name of Jesus, I am asking whatsoever every individual has heard, equip. In their preparation, in their acknowledging, in their knowing, build their faith and build our faith together so together we can reach out. Diversely though, you have called us this way. So my father, let us see the victory ahead. Those that the enemy has deceived, those that the enemy has so tasked in their lives, those that the enemy have planted so many different things that are hindering them from moving forward. We stand by your word and by the blood of the Lamb and we deliver them right now in Jesus' name. We speak their deliverance because you have delivered them. We speak what heaven has done already and we set that in place in Jesus' name. You are delivered. You are set free. You are healed. You are empowered. That is who you are. Let the enemy not subdue you and put you down. Let the enemy not take you to your old sins, the things that you have, you have missed long time ago, the way you have walked long time ago. No, you are different now at a time such as this. You are different. And I pray that grace upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just give the Lord a mighty offering. It is his. It's not mine. He only gave me a word to speak. And I have spoken it. If you are challenged, don't think that I looked at your face and I spoke what I knew about you. Sometimes it's good to remind you of what I know about you. It's good. God bless you. 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 If there are any announcements, it shall be given. Thank you. Praise God. Bless God. I just want to remind this church that there are times we find ourselves lacking because we don't have a permanent place of ours and our youth are not being supported. Our young ones need that support. But we can only do that if we have money because the Bible says money answers all things. And God can do it. Amen? There are some of us here who can give more and more. There are others who have not given for months and, and weeks and years. I challenge you hard. It is too your shame but also it is also too the fact that you are not doing what God wants you to do. There's an opportunity to be blessed also in financial and material things. And I want to remind you that your tithes and your offerings go a long way to support us. They support this ministry to be able to reach out. They support this ministry to be able to even rent this place and use that we gather. And so... Those of you who give online, 
I want to remind you again, we have our online account that you can give. It might be on the screen right now. Glorious Inheritance Mission Worldwide. And the account number would be there for you to pay in. Give bountifully. Give cheerfully. Give and give and be given. I remember in the book of Exodus when God wanted Israel to build a tabernacle. He said, tell the people to give. Tell them to give their support. Tell them to give their money. And if you are here, you have not been given and you are listening to me and you have not been given, I want you to change your mind and give. Give your substance. Father, I release grace unto us right now that we let and release that money that we hold on to that it shall be a vehicle for you to reach out also unto the nations. We give you praise for this grace. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll be meeting, God giving us grace, next Sunday here as well. Unless a word comes to you for any reason. We'll be having our prayer times on Friday and our prayer times on Saturday on the threshing floor. There are also prayer times every day of the week, of the working week, Monday to Friday, from 1 o'clock to 1.45. Prayer goes on on the same threshing floor. You can join in any time that you want to join in and leave any time that you want to leave. But it is to affect the nations and to affect the people that we pray for. God richly bless you. We shall see ourselves again. God giving us grace. But until we meet again, can you call one another and seek their good? One another's good. God bless you. There will be the offering bowl there if you have brought in your offering, you can put in there and it will go straight to the bank as you give. Let us receive the benediction, shall you stand? Today, I know, I know my... January birthdays. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know we call